Welcome to another video from explainingcomputers.com. This time I'm going to give you my predictions for computing in the 2020s. More than anything, this video is intended to promote debate, so please do share your feedback and ideas down in the comments section. I thought we'd start out by placing the 2020s in context using the five ages of computing model from my book Digital Genesis. This categorises all computing developments before 1980 as early computing, with modern end user computing starting with the rise of the PC. Around 2000 we then saw the start of a network computing age, with computer applications shifting from computation alone to also embrace communication. Today I would argue that 2020 marks the dawn of the cognitive computing age. What this means is that, increasingly, computing devices will be able to internally possess, or more likely remotely access, some form of AI. Please note that this does not imply that computers in the 2020s are going to become sentient. Rather, it simply means that computers will use machine learning to automate prediction in addition to being used for communication and computation. For example, neural networks will be trained using sampled data and will then apply this learning to make predictions when they're presented with data they had not encountered before. As a result of this, in the 2020s we will see the rise of attentive computing and the transformation of user interfaces. Until now, most computers have been dumb, so people have had to attend to them. But increasingly, computing devices including smart speakers, robots and driverless cars will be able to attend to us rather than the other way around. It will indeed be impossible for robots and driverless cars to function effectively and safely alongside human beings if they're not able to predict our actions by applying machine learning. In the past decade, we've seen the rise in popularity of the Raspberry Pi and other single board computers. Some of these, like the Latte Panda Alpha, are now as powerful as some desktop PCs, and I expect across the 2020s the line between the SBC and the traditional desktop PC is going to get increasingly blurred, with many people's desktop PCs shrinking to this kind of size. And indeed already we've got PCs of this size being used in offices and things like that perfectly acceptably because we've got things like the Intel NUC devices, some of which have got an i7 processor, and we've got clear device like this, a UDU Bolt, which has got a Ryzen processor. So already some people can have a very small desktop PC. But you can't today really do things like high-end video editing and gaming on a PC of this size, but that is going to change. My guess it is in within maybe, I don't know, five years, most people will be able to do most of their desktop computing on device of this size if they wish to. And I think there's going to be two technology trends that really drive that. The first is going to be the availability of higher and higher capacity M.2 or other small form factor SSDs, which will allow a PC of this size to have tens of terabytes of storage. And the other development will be the increasing power of integrated graphics. So you won't have to have a separate graphics card to do things like a high-end video editing and gaming. And this will allow us to have very, very powerful small desktop computers. Today, when we assess a computer's capabilities, we tend to focus on the power of its CPU, its central processing unit, and its GPU, its graphics processing unit. However, in the 2020s, I suspect that these two particular parts of a computer will be joined in our focus by the NPU, the neural processing unit. And an NPU is basically a microprocessor which is dedicated, which has been optimized to run machine learning algorithms, to run things like neural networks. And so as we see the rise in significance of AI, we will see the rise in prominence of the NPU as a critical comp component in many computers. Now, today it's not quite clear what we should be calling what I'm calling here the NPU. Microsoft, for example, does use the term NPU. But Google talks about TPUs, TensorFlow processing units, which are the chips it's created for the servers and its data centers, which actually run AI algorithms, machine learning algorithms. 
So exactly what we'll be calling the uh, NPU in uh, 10 years time, I don't really know, but I've no doubt at all that in effect we'll have shifted from a world where we evaluate computers based upon their CPU and GPU to evaluating computers based upon their CPU, their GPU and their NPU. In the last decade, cloud computing went mainstream. And I suspect that in the 2020s, we're going to see more and more of our data, more and more of our computer processing power migrating online. You might say people don't like to have all their stuff online. I know a lot of people object to it, but the evidence is it keeps occurring. More and more people are putting more and more faith in the cloud. This said, I think in parallel with the rise of cloud computing or the continued rise of cloud computing in the 2020s, we're going to see an increasing prominence of edge computing with more and more of our processing, particularly neural processing, taking place on small devices very close to the edges of our networks. So, for example, I think we're going to see a lot of cameras which are actually equipped with NPUs and running neural networks to do local vision recognition. One of the technologies I think will drive a lot of this is going to be the rise of 5G wireless networks and in time maybe even 6G wireless networks. And one of the things I think these will enable to happen to a very large extent is the uh, rise of cloud robotics, which is basically we have a robotic system which has got part of its uh, processing capabilities out in the cloud. So I think it's perfectly possible that by the late 2020s, you will find in homes and in offices, robots which are based upon cloud robotics. So you will have a, a co-worker or maybe a, a home assistant, which has got part of its brain out in the cloud. Talking of brains in the cloud, I suspect that in the second half of the 2020s, quantum computing, and in particular online quantum computing as a service, is going to become a commercial reality. Now, I know that quantum computing has been pursued as a dream of a new form of computer for many, many years. The idea of a computer which can process data using qubits, quantum bits rather than traditional bits, and which can therefore engage in massively parallel processing. And many people I know still think quantum computing will never happen. But my take on it is if you look at what's gone on the past few years, you look at the progress made by uh, IBM, by Intel, by Google and, and others, it is clear to me that quantum computing has got past that point of uh, never going to happen. I think it's now heading towards commercial reality. And certainly IBM and, and Google and others and Intel do think it will be available as a useful commercial service in the second half of the 2020s. Now, this doesn't mean that quantum computers are going to replace traditional computers, but they will complement them. And in particular, quantum computers should be good at tasks like molecular modeling, which in turn will allow us to understand better things like physics and chemistry and biology and healthcare and engineering. And that will be transformative in many areas of our lives. And if you want to know more about quantum computing and where I think it's going to head, you can watch my quantum computing update videos or head on over to explainingcomputers.com. Across the 2020s, I suspect there's going to be more and more focus on the negative health implications of intensive computer use. People like myself who are in the, the first phase of users of personal computers back in the 80s and the 90s were used to using keyboards, for example, like this one, which I'm sure some of you will recognize. Very big individually switched keys, beautiful to type on, but uh, well, at least so we thought, the implication of using these has been very bad for the health of people like myself and many others. Lots of RSI problems came from uh, constantly typing on this type of keyboard. But I think in the 2020s, it's going to be the millennials who are going to be the focus here because these are the people who have almost been weaned on digital technology. They've been using it all their lives. And I think it'll be in the 2020s that this group of people, this generation, start to have major problems with their joints, particularly in their fingers, problems with their eyesight because of their intense computer use. And that, I think, will start to change attitudes potentially to how intensively we should be using at least traditional computing devices. I also think there's going to be a lot of focus on the uh, mental health implications of computer use. We've already got what I call the ADHD culture today, where people are so used to being constantly bombarded by notifications, they can't focus and concentrate for long periods. Uh, they're just so used to being plugged into the machine, if you like, plugged into the internet. I think 
that is something we'll start to question. And I think we'll also start to question the implications of social media for people's mental health, an issue which is getting increasing prominence. So I think health concerns are going to mediate and cause us to reflect on our computer use in the 2020s. Right, getting controversial, I predict that the 2020s will be the decade of peak smartphone. Which is not to suggest that the smartphones are going to disappear in the 2020s, but I do suspect that by the second half of the 2020s, smartphone use will start to decline. I am always amazed when people tell me in the organisations and consultancy firms and things like that, that we're going to see all interfaces to almost everything becoming a smartphone app. And I always go, but remember, a smartphone is a very new piece of technology. You know, 20 years ago, they almost didn't exist. Even 10 years ago, they weren't that popular. So the idea that the smartphone is the ultimate and the final, if you like, computing interface, I think is just misguided. Rather, I suspect that by the second half of the 2020s, an increasing proportion of our interactions with digital technology will be taking place as we interact with things like smart speakers, with smart robots, and we will interact with driverless cars. They can have a lot of powerful AI inside them. You won't get into a vehicle and use your smartphone. You'll get into a vehicle and, and talk to the vehicle and watch things on its screens, etc. And I also suspect that what I've just talked about, the issues of computing affecting our, our mental health, will also lead towards probably peak social media in, in the 2020s, and that in turn will also impact on the fact we'll get towards peak smartphone. So there we are, slightly controversial uh, prediction, I guess. I think we will see peak smartphone in the 2020s. Returning to the five ages of computing, during the 2020s, I predict there will be increasing progress towards cyborg fusion. One day, this will allow human brains to be directly interfaced with machines, so negating the need for people to use smartphones or any other form of intermediate computing device. Already, rudimentary brain-computer interfaces, or BCIs, have been invented and tested. Some of these read and stimulate the brain indirectly using sensors on the outside of the skull, while others are based on implanted multi-electrode chips that interface directly with human wetware. In time, as I've discussed on my Explaining the Future channel, we may even develop organic computing technology and the related ability to grow our own brain-computer interfaces following genetic modification. Such developments will not happen in the 2020s, but it will be technological advancements in this decade that may allow them to happen in the future. Who knows, in the 2040s, we may be interfacing our brains together collectively on a new internet platform called you Mind. Over the past decade, computing has changed a great deal, and I think we'll see even more change in the 2020s. As this occurs, I suspect that the power of the big computing companies will only continue to increase, but in parallel, I also think we're going to see an increasing use of open source software, things like the Linux operating system, so the big technology giants won't have everything their own way. If you want to know more about my predictions for the future of computing, you can look at my book, Digital Genesis. But now that's it for another video. If you enjoyed what you see here, please press that like button. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.